Today I'm going to show you how to assemble a local anesthetic syringe and we're going to go over the anatomy of the syringe as well as the needle and the carpule. The carpule has your anesthetic. The anesthetic is what is used to numb your patient. There are different varieties to choose from. You of course would assemble what the doctor requests. Here you can see we have lidocaine. You can check the expiration date, whether or not it has epinephrine in it. This one does. Epinephrine is a vasoconstrictor. Each anesthetic type has its own color coding, so lidocaine happens to have a red stripe for easy, quick identification. This is the aluminum cap with the diaphragm in the middle. And on the opposite end is your rubber stopper. This is where the harpoon of the syringe goes. And in the diaphragm, this is where the stylus of the needle goes. What we want to do is we want to clean the diaphragm. And we do that with some alcohol. We just rub the diaphragm and let it dry. While you are looking at your carpules, you want to check for any cracks, any discoloration, any bubbles that might be in the solution. If you have cracks, discoloration, or bubbles, or the stopper is pushed out, you don't want to use that carpule, or of course if it's expired. Set it to the side to dry, and take a look at your anesthetic syringe. So the anesthetic syringe is sterilized between patients. Your anatomy is a thumb ring. Make sure it's tight. You have a piston. You have a finger rest. This is movable. You have your barrel where the carpule goes. Make sure your barrel is tight. You have the needle adapter end. This is where the needle is attached. And there's a window here. So when the doctor is using it, they can draw back and see if they have inserted into a blood vessel. This is called a aspirating syringe. If you notice the harpoon, this little arrow shaped pointed end, that's what's going to stick into the rubber stopper. And we have to engage that by tapping on the thumb ring. Before we can insert the carpule, we want to attach the needle first. I prefer doing it this way. This is how I teach my students because if you put the needle on first, you can make sure that the stylus is straight and not bent. If you have a bent stylus, it won't be able to puncture the carpule. If you put the carpule in first, then you're trying to force the stylus of the needle through the diaphragm and that could pose a hazard if the cap comes loose on the needle. So I teach my students needles first. Needle is the first thing on and the last thing off. When you're looking at your needles, needles are also labeled, they have an expiration date, they come in different lengths and different gauges. Gauges refer to the thickness or the diameter of the lumen. The lumen is the hollow part of the needle that allows liquid to go from the carpule and be injected into the patient. So this is a 25 gauge long needle. What you want to do first is twist and pull the protective cap off the stylus. Place the stylus through the hole on your adapter. I always like to support it with a pinky. And here's what's really important. Always turn the metal syringe, never turn the needle. If you turn the needle, there's a chance that the cap could come off and that's where needle sticks occur. So turn the metal syringe until it is securely in place. 
Now we can insert our carfuel. What we have to do is we have to make this metal cylinder disappear so there's room. To do that, you have to grasp the piston in your fist and then push up with your thumb and finger. And while you do that, the, this metal cylinder will disappear. So we retract that metal cylinder, pick up our car fuel, insert it rubber stopper down, lay it in place, and then keep your thumb on top of it and slowly release the piston. So as the car fuel slides, the stylus will puncture the rubber diaphragm. Now we have to engage the harpoon. Right now it's loose. You can hear it wiggle around. To engage the harpoon, turn your assembly so that it is needle down and give it two quick smacks on the thumb ring. You can then try to wiggle your piston and you hear that it is not moving. The other thing you could do, but you'd have to do it very carefully and very slowly, is you could gently pull back on the piston and watch the rubber stopper move down. And that's all the further you want to pull it. If I were to pull it any further, it would disengage. So once your harpoon is engaged in the rubber stopper, we want to dispel or dispense any air bubbles that may be in the car fuel. We do that by holding the needle vertical and some needle caps are transparent or clear like this one, others are not. If it's transparent or clear, you can gently push up on the thumb ring and watch until you have two drops of anesthetic come out. That ensures that there's a free flowing of anesthetic from the carpule through the needle. If you push on the piston and you don't get any, any anesthetic droplets, that means that your stylus is most likely bent. So here is your fully assembled anesthetic setup. And a lot of offices use a needle holder like this Jenkers. We just set it like this. If you don't have one of these, you can just lay it on the treatment tray. And we try to hide this from the patient. I know a lot of times you might set it up before treatment, but you probably want to drape it with the patient napkin so they don't see it, because this is what frightens patients most often. To disassemble this safely, I'll first show you how to refill it. Sometimes a doctor would need to give more than one car fuel anesthetic. What we have to do is we have to disengage the harpoon so you pull back and you'll hear a click when it's disengaged. Use your thumb to slide it off the stylus, tip it out, and this will go in the sharps container. We typically keep these on the treatment tray so we can record how many and what type was given to the patient. So you could then grab another anesthetic, disinfect the rubber diaphragm, insert it just as you did the original, rubber stopper down, lay it down flat, keep your thumb on top, and slowly let this metal cylinder, the piston, push it up so that the stylus punctures that diaphragm. Engage your harpoon again, give a little test, dispense two droplets, anesthetic. There we go. And this is ready to be used or to give a second dose to a patient. To disassemble, remember needle is the first item on, it's the last item off. So what I do is remove the carpule We've got to make that metal cylinder disappear. Pull. You'll hear the pop. That's the harpoon disengaging from the rubber stopper. Tip it out. 
record this on the patient chart before you throw it away. And then to remove the needle safely, hold the needle steady. Don't hold it like this. If the cap were to come off, it's gonna go directly into your hand. So hold it right here. And remember, never turn the needle. Always be in control of the needle. Don't let the needle move. You want to turn your metal syringe. So turning the syringe, the metal part, is a lot safer than turning the needle cap. And then just keep turning till it falls away. What you see here is the stylus, and the needle is protected by the cap. But the stylus is just as sharp, so you don't want to um, be careless with the stylus. And this would go directly into your sharps container. 